most of you who are in Christianity hide under a false new covenant that claims that you are saved by grace apart from the works of our Creator's word? You got this blasphemous doctrine from the teachings of Saul of Tarsus? Our Creator's true word that was testified to by His only begotten Son declares that Saul's teachings are blasphemous lies. Our Creator's true word testifies that the Roman Catholic whorehouse is the mother whore of Babylon. And it was the mother whore who claimed that Saul's writings were our Creator's inspired word. It was the mother whore that put his writings in the book that is called the Holy Bible. Our Creator's true word clearly testifies against Saul and his writings. Our Messiah himself, as recorded by the eyewitnesses John and Matthew, clearly testified against Saul and his teachings. He spoke this Saul would come onto the scene later and that you would follow him instead. He said this in John chapter 5 verse 43, I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. But when, one, when another comes in his own name, you will receive him. His Father's name is testified to by his word. The image of his name is testified to by his word. It is his righteous character. In the verse, in this verse, Yeshua was saying that he came in his Father's righteousness that his word testifies to. Our Messiah was made to be in the image of his Father's word. Therefore, he was in total unity with his Father's righteousness. And he is still. He told Philip that if he had seen him, that he had seen his Father. His Father raised him up in the image of his word, and he sent him to bear witness to his word. What people refer to as a new covenant is not a different covenant. It is a renewing of the covenant that our Creator offers to those whom he calls to become his eternal children. His covenant is a covenant to walk with him, to become his seed, just like was the case with the covenants that he made with all who have become his eternal children. The renewed covenant that he sent through his only begotten son simply contains a different vehicle to return to his covenant to become his eternal seed. In speaking of this renewing of the covenant, Jeremiah recorded the saying in Jeremiah 31, For if an individual has sinned, he will die. And every man that eats the sour grape, his teeth will be set on edge. Sin is transgression of Yahweh's Torah. His word says so. The offer to return to him does not contain a license to transgress against his Torah. To make this claim is insanity. Our Messiah referred to you, to your teeth being set on edge when he said that those of you who do lawlessness and teach others to stumble at his father's word will wail and gnash your teeth. I'll read you where he spoke this in Matthew 13, verse 40. He says, And therefore the terrors are gathered and burnt in the fire. So will it be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send forth his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all who snare others, all of you who cause others to stumble at Yahweh's word, and those which do lawlessness, those of you who live in violation of the Torah, and they will cast them into a furnace of fire, and there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Your teeth will be set on edge. And why will this be? It is because you ate the sour grape. The wine that you are drunk off of is the wine of fornication to the Most High and to His Son. You are not partakers of our Messiah's true blood and His true flesh. Back to Jeremiah 31. Behold, the days will come, say Yahweh, that I will cut a renewing or a refreshing of the covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah not according to the covenant that I cut with your fathers in the day that I took them by the hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt, where I was to be a husband unto them, and they broke apart my covenant, say Yahweh. For this will be the covenant that I will cut with the house of Israel. After those days, say Yahweh, I will put my Torah in their inward parts, and I will write it in their hearts, and I will be their Elohim, and they will be my people. After what days is he talking about? If you are in this renewed covenant, you would have his Torah written in your heart, and it would be the core of your being. But instead, most of you think that it was nailed to the cross, or you pervert it by picking and choosing what you will hearken to. The reality is, only a small flock have laid siege to our Messiah's atoning blood, and that enabled them to return to our Yahweh through the renewing of the covenant to become his children. Only a small flock laid siege to the condition that his Father put before us that is required of us in order to have his shed blood applied to our transgressions. The rest of you who claim his blood have twisted it into a license to continue in your rebellion to his Father. The renewed covenant that Yahweh sent his only begotten Son to us with was an offer to us to return to becoming his eternal children. 
And this offer included the atoning sacrifice of his son's shed blood as a vehicle for us to use to return to his straight and narrow path that teaches us to become as he is. It is a covenant where he and his son live in and through us through his seven spirits. His seven spirits write his Torah in our hearts and in our inward parts. It is not a covenant that allows us to continue to walk on our own path and expect the Most High to walk with us. Walking with him on his narrow path is required of us. His word says so. In Micah 6, 8, we read, He tells you, man, what is good. What does Shekhar require from us? For if you will do justice, if we will live his righteous judgments, and love his favor, and walk humbly, or walk lowly with Elohim. His word tells us what is pleasing to him. His word tells us that obeying his word by walking with him in his word is what brings us into his favor. We are to follow his only begotten son and his son was made in the image of his word. It means we are to walk in his word as his son did. To become perfect in the same manner that he is perfect. His word tells us that two cannot walk together unless they are agreed. He poses a question a few verses later in Micah. He asks in verse 11, Shall I count them pure with the with wicked balances and with a, the bag of deceitful weights? Folks, why don't you ask yourself the question, what are you doing here in the flesh if you are saved by grace? Why are there famines and diseases and suffering in the world? Why the natural disasters? Why are there babies that get sick and die? Since most of you believe that we are in the end times, the big question that you should be asking is, why is Shekhi going to send the time of great affliction upon the world at the time of the end? His word tells us why. He tells us that it is because you have profaned his Torah and you have polluted his Sabbath and you put no difference between the clean and the unclean. Why don't you believe him? Instead, you tell him what the conditions are for the covenant that you have made with him. It does not work this way. Your doing so is no different than what Adam and Eve did in the garden that got them kicked, shut off from the tree of life, kicked out of the garden and shut off from the tree of life. They decided right from wrong for themselves and rejected Yahweh's commandment. Yeshua said that his Father will send his Spirit to guide us if we keep his commandments. Why don't you believe him? Every covenant that he has made with those whom he has invited to become his, his seed has required walking with him on his terms. His Son said plainly that he did not come to get rid of one punctuation mark from his Father's Torah until heaven and earth pass away. He said that we would in no way enter into his father's kingdom unless our righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Why don't you believe him? I will tell you why. It's because you have chosen to follow wolves in sheep's clothing instead. You chose to follow that which desolated, desolated Yahweh's word, the writings of Saul of Tarsus and his followers. Yahweh allowed for this to test and prove you while, you while he called out those who became his temple from our midst, those whom he chose to become his temple were those who came to his call. This is very simple. Our Messiah said, many are called, few are chosen. According to his word, if his Torah is not written in your hearts and, and in your innermost recesses of your inner core, you are not in the renewed covenant with him that he has offered. Therefore, he is not your Elohim, and you are not his people. You are of your father the devil. Thus saith Yahweh Elohim's word.